Amen. They say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. I appreciate every one of you. And I thank God for your life. I thank God for the man of God, our national basia. We salute you, sir. Reverend Okay. It's an honor to have you. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for every one of you, every member of this ministry, the leaders. You are awesome. Give Jesus a clap of praise. Thank God for the madam of the house. We appreciate you, Pastor Julius. Amen. And uh, Apostle, thank God for your life. You know, before yesterday we've been blessed, and yesterday the same thing. Today we are expecting more impartation and Amen. activation. Everybody say impartation and activation. Amen. Amen. The, the ministry of uh, inner healing is quite, it's not just prophecy, it's not just word of knowledge, it's dealing with issues. Issues. There are some of things, some of you that things were told you, you were not aware about those things. And that's what happened to me when I first met Apostle. There were things he said about me, I was wondering, but deep down, it is true. Praise the Lord. And those are the things that affect us, we are not aware of. That's what the inner healing does. He pulled them out. There are issues. When he told me, he, he told me, he said that this is somebody offend you that you, you, you thought you forgive, but you not really forgive. Me. And I, I prayed, I forgive, but when I, he said you don't forgive from your head, you forgive from your heart. He said because of that, the enemy has, you know, sneak through the back door. So it, that is what inner healing does. He unveiled the secret. Praise the Lord Hallelujah. that the enemy is using against us, so that we can be free. Amen. Amen. Father, we just give you all the glory. We thank you for the honor and the privilege to stand before you. Yes. This morning we love you because you first love us. Yes. Father, none of us deserve anything. It's only your mercy and it's only your grace. We acknowledge that you are everything. You are everything. We worship you, our Father. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for inviting us, for calling us to glory. And I will give you praise. It's all about you. And you delight in us. We love you, Lord. I trust you for all trust to declare your oracle. And I trust that every hearer will be edified. And Christ will be magnified. And all the scheme and plot of the enemy will be nullified. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for anointing my tongue to speak your oracle. Mistress of the kingdom. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. We're dealing with the team. Alpha and Omega, praise the Lord. As the Lord has led our pastor, they may give Jesus a clap of it for your pastor. My beloved brother, Pastor Elia, praise the Lord. God bless. Amen. You look clergy today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You, look, you look reverend father. <laughs> you are very reverend, praise the Lord. Amen. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Say he's Alpha. He's Omega. He's beginning. He's the end. Glory to God. Revelation 1 10. I was in the spirit on the last day. Let's read together. Please, let's pay attention. Amen. Let's pay attention Why people are sitting down. The people behind you can move forward so that let the lead come and sit behind. Please. Amen. Let the lead come and sit behind. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Revelation 110. I want to try and teach. I could preach it, but I want to try and explain some certain things. Praise the Lord. Since today is the last day, let some people come go with tangible substance of God's word. Amen. The Bible said in Revelation 110, I was in the spirit on the last day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book and send it to all to unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being told, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and guide about the paths with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, 
and his eyes were a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in the furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp to a sword, and his countenance was as the sun shined in his strength. Now when I saw him, I fell at his feet. As dead, and he laid his right hand on me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that lived and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, John the Beloved was the one who writes. Who wrote this uh, revelation, the book of Revelation? And the Bible made us to understand in the book of John that John is the one that sits in the bosom of the Lord Jesus eh? and put his head on his bosom. When they want an intimate answer to question, they ask John. John was close to Jesus. He knew him as a man and he had the revelation of his deity. Praise the Lord. But John was in the spirit of the Lord and he had the voice. And he turned to see the voice. And it was a different person. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. It is not the usual one. He lay his head on. And that's why that picture, you have to remove it and throw it away. <laughs> that is not our Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, it's, even if it is just a picture, it should, it's a misrepresentation. The Jesus that lived is different from the Jesus that rose again. Amen. He is the same. But in his humanity, he was human. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But when he put down the humanity, when John saw him, John could not put his head on his bosom. He said, I fell down as dead. Because the one I know was Mary's baby. But this one, his eyes like flame of fire. His hair white as wool. His voice like the sound of many water. He said, this is different. He fell down as dead. Hallelujah. And he laid his hand on him. Say, I am still Alpha. I'm the first. I am the last. Look, the Bible said we know him no more after the flesh. Even though we once knew him after the flesh. He is the risen Savior. I heard it out, I said long ago that the Jesus that died is not as important as the Jesus that rose again. Amen, amen. Come on. Because in his humanity, he came to accomplish a mission. But the God we serve is not the baby that was born in the major. We serve the risen and exalted Savior. So if you're still looking at Jesus in a human form, you will be limited. Are you following what I'm saying? That Jesus we serve is the risen Savior. He's not the, the, the human Savior that died. Are you following what I'm saying? He's the one that conquered death, hell, and the grave. He said, I have the key of hell and death. But before then, he didn't have it. So we serve the risen Savior. Yeah. The one highly exalted. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to have a revelation of whom we serve. Right. Because John saw him in a different dimension. Yeah. In his glory. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In this time he was different. His voice was like the sound of many water. Praise the Lord. He laid down. He said, get up. I am the first. I am the last. Hallelujah. I start and I finish. And I finish before I start. Praise the Lord. I finish before I start. Like I said yesterday, humans, we start, we finish. But God does not start and finish. He finishes before he comes to start. He said, I am the Lord who declares the end from the beginning. The things that are not yet done, say my counsel shall stand and I will fulfill all my pleasure. And I said yesterday that he's ahead and he's behind. I am standing here, I cannot be behind. But he's behind, he's here at the same time. Omnipresent God. And we are in between. And your destiny is in his hand, and your destiny is in your hand. Are you following what I'm saying? What God wants to do with us is subject to our submission. 
So the first key I said yesterday is divine alignment. Amen? Yes. He has a purpose. The, the essence of this gathering is to build up our potential. Amen. And the man of God told us, every one of us has a gift, yes. have a destiny, have a potential. So what do I do? Seek the Lord if you don't know. Yes. That's why we read uh, Jeremiah 29 yesterday. He said, I know the plan I have towards you. Yes. For every child God has a plan. So you have to find what it is. You have to follow what it is. You have to fulfill what it is. Amen. So you find, follow, and fulfill it. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is between you and God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And some of us, we see Alpha. But for us to see Omega, we have to come to our wit end. Yes. Yes. You have to come to the end of yourself. Yes. Sometimes we go so far and we cannot go beyond. Yeah. And the reason we go so far, we cannot go beyond because we are full of self. Amen. For God to take you further, you need to die. Yes. The only way to, to have a revelation of the Omega is to die. Yes. God did not call us to live the Christian life. He called us to die yes. so that he can live in us. Yes. Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Yes. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, mm. but Christ that liveth in me. Yes. The Christian life is Christ in us, the hope of glory. A lot of us, we try to live the Christian life, we stumble, we fall. Because you can't. The old man does not see the glory. The old man must die. And the new man must come alive. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? Hallelujah. It is only the new man in Christ. So the Lord said, how do we begin to move forward? As Apostle tells us, sometimes you can have a mental picture or say what you, the word of God is saying. But in your heart, you are saying the different thing. And it's not what you say with your mouth that really manifests. It's what you say with your heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, what you are on the inside is what you can become on the outside. The reason why God gave us his word is to change us from inside out. Praise the Lord. So most of us, we deal with the outward. We ignore the inward. If our sisters can take time to, to, to focus on their inward character down on the, on the Medicaid, we will have angels in churches. So you understand what I'm saying? There are so much effort we spend just to get one leg right. Some of us, we say the one God did, God didn't do it very well. They remove God's own. Then get a pencil and carve their own. So you know more than God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Effort we put, and the Bible said, let your adorning not be the outward adornments. Let it be the inner word, the hidden man of the heart. The hidden man of the heart is what we want to see. And not for Mary Kay and makeup and show. We want virtuous women Hallelujah. with character. We want virtuous men with character. Put down your Kevin Klein. Let's see who you are in character. Hallelujah. Take off your suit. Let's see. We need some people of character. Yes. I'm speaking all about myself. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We need character. You can't depend on somebody. You can't rely on somebody. Before you know they stab you behind. No character. We have faith, but the faith is not a life. Because it's not grounded in the world. But God is calling us to adorn the hidden man of the heart. He said it has a beauty and an ornament of grace. Are you following us? True character is on the inside. True character is what? On the inside. And the only way we can transform is to begin to truly see as God sees. Yes. Amen? Amen? And speak as God speaks. Yes. It's not outward dealings. It's inner dealing. Mm -hmm. There is an inner life and there is an outward life. Outward life is what people see. We were doing something at Human Resources class and they said there are, they were talking about the Johari windows and they said that humans there are sides we want others to see. There are sides that we truly are. Yes. 
Are you following me? And they said there is a side of you, a spot that you are not aware of. But people see it. But you are not aware of They call it the black, the black window or the, the black spot. So we all have the black spot. You don't, the blank side, you don't know it exists. And it's there. And sometimes that is what people know about you. So when they are talking about you, you did this, you say, sit down. Me? Me? You begin to swear. No, I did not. I have never, I don't talk like that. Yet it is you. Yeah. Why? Because you are not aware. Yeah. And that's what the word of God does. Mm. The word of God is a mirror. Yeah. It shows you your true nature. Mm. And when you are sincere and honest, you open up your head, self, for the surgery of the world. Yeah. And the world cut those things out. Then you reflect the image of Christ. Yeah. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. The Bible said in Hebrew chapter 13. Let me start from there, then I'll wind it up. For me to experience Omega, I have to divinely align myself. Because he has a counsel, he has a way, he has a system. God's system is different from the human system. God's ways are different from human ways. God's system, the kingdom of God is different from worldly system. But you can, most times when you look at a Christian, you can't tell the difference between the believer and unbeliever. The church was so much to become like the world. I don't, I cannot understand in my head. Why are we fighting so much to become like the world? And God said, come back from among them and be yes separate. Yes. But we want to be like them. And that was the error of the nation of Israel. They said, we want a king like other nation. Amen. God said, no, I'm your king. They said, no, we want a king. And now we want to dress like the world. We want to sing the song of the world. We come to church, we are worshiping, but it is worship payment. <laughs> It's worship tenement. Some of the songs we sing and we dance, God has no idea about those songs. We sing them for ourselves. We entertain ourselves. We don't worship God. Sing some songs, some sister will get offended because you, they didn't dance. The worship, the praise and worship is not for your dancing. It's for God. It's supposed to be for God. We bring that sacrifice of praise unto the Lord, not unto you. Why are you offended because you didn't, we, we didn't sing the song you like? It's not club. If you want to dance, get a CD, play it in your house, and dance. There's nothing wrong dancing in church. But we have this religious mentality in church. We make church a social gathering. Praise the Lord. But we need to return to the tangible things. The rich, the simplicity of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Because we want to see the Omega. We have seen the Alpha manifest. But we have to see the Omega. John saw the Alpha, but when he saw the Omega, he went down as a dead man. Praise the Lord. God wants to reveal himself more to us. But in the state we are, if God show up in church the way he wants to show up, some people will drop down like Ananias. Praise the Lord. We're not ready for the glory. And he said it's coming for a glorious church. Without spot, without blame, without wrinkle. Praise the Lord. We must put aside religion. And get back to relationship. Yes. Intimacy. Come on. We know people who used to call themselves SU. You. you can pay, you can predict a Christian. Yes. But nowadays you can't predict a Christian. A Christian sing the same song. Dance the same dance. A willow, a wala. Some of those dance are from the pit of hell. Yes. And you see, even in Ocha, in, 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 in on top of the pulpit. I just look at these things. I say, what in the world is all this? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Having the form of godliness, we have no power. Praise the Lord. It's a sober moment. He said in Hebrew chapter 13, verse 5, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Amen. Some of us went on to, to, to understand, even just to get a loan and buy a car so that we can say, God bless us. God did not bless you, you blessed yourself. The blessing of God may get rich and added no sorrow. Mm. We prove. We want to prove our Christianity by manifestation. No. If his Christianity is by works, then Jesus was a failure. Yeah. Then the apostles were failure. They never owned a mansion. And yet they fulfill destiny. Mm. They fulfill destiny. 
So success is knowing the will of God for your life. And finding, following and fulfilling the will of God. You run your race and finish your course with joy. 